I love to read books to my kids before they go to bed. It's a special time when we relax, we joke around, and maybe learn a thing or two. Since I'm a bit of a money nerd, I often choose kids' books about money. Over time, my obvious tricks of getting my kids interested in money books, they've worked. Now they call out for them by name. Maybe they're being nice to their dear old nerdy dad, but I don't mind. <laughs> I think they're gonna grow up to be super happy, wealthy, and generous kids. How's that for a hashtag humble dad brag? <laughs> Each of these books has a different theme. Some of the books are about delayed gratification and spending smart, while others teach the importance of saving and investing. Here are 10 different kids' books about money that we've enjoyed and ones we're excited about reading as a family. Number one, If You Made a Million, written by David A. Schwartz and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. This book helps kids grasp how big one million dollars really is. With a little humor and goofiness from Marvelisso the Mathematical Magician, he helps children count coins, dollars, and many things you can buy with your money. One of my favorite parts happens near the end of the book. They discuss how compound interest works, and they review the importance of enjoying the work you do for a living. How's that for financial independence? <laughs> This book has so many life and money lessons, and it's fun for young kids, too. Some of the money lessons learned are counting money in different denominations, understanding what money can buy, investing and compound interest, finding joy in your work, and giving back. The recommended age range for the book is four to eight years old, and it's around 40 pages. Number two. Money Monsters, written by Akoma Moronu Schreiner and illustrated by Sandaya Prabhat. Author Akoma Moronu Schreiner has developed this awesome book as a money series. The first book in the series is called Missing Money. We enjoy this one because unlike some other books, Money Monsters is a more of a modern book. The story discusses new financial terms like fintech apps, online savings, and using debit cards for kids. While the story is new and modern, the lessons, they're tried and true. The little boy featured in the story, Kai, learns all about saving and making plans for his money. Even in my 30s, I need to remember some of those lessons. <laughs> some of the money lessons learned are saving and planning, how banks work, how technology can help us save, making money, and managing money. The book is recommended for three to seven-year-olds, and it's 33 pages, and it was released in 2019, so pretty new. Number three, Alexander, Who Used to Be Rich Last Sunday, written by Judith Vjorst and illustrated by Ray Cruz. Sometimes when we get some money, it vanishes super fast. That's what Alexander learns the hard way in this children's money book. Alexander gets a dollar from his grandparents on Sunday, but many things happen to him, aka he spends it really quickly, and he ends up with almost nothing to show for it. This story teaches kids to learn the importance of making a plan for your money so you're happy with how you used it. The money lessons learned in this book are smart spending, saving your money, peer pressure in money, and delayed gratification. Again, a lot of things I could learn. <laughs> the recommended age range for this one is four to eight years old, and it's 32 pages. The next one, number four, is Bunny Money, and it's written by Rosemarie Wells, and illustrated as well. This kid's story is a tale of a bunny named Max, who joined his sister Ruby as they're shopping for a gift for their grandma. Max's impulse spending makes the trip somewhat of a disaster, but Grandma still loves them both in the end. <laughs> the book is cute, it's funny, and it helps kids learn the importance of shopping with a list. This is a tactic that many adults even forget, so kids who read this book will be reminded of how important shopping with a plan can be. The money lessons learned in this one, shopping with a plan, delayed gratification, Avoiding impulse purchases, buying gifts for family. It's recommended for kids aged three to five, and it's around 32 pages. 
The next one, which we hope to buy soon, is Lemonade in Winter, written by Emily Jenkins and G. Brian Karras. Pauline wants to have a lemonade stand. The only problem is that it's winter time. Her parents try to convince her that it's not the best idea because no one will be on the streets and no one will want a cold drink on a cold day. Pauline and her little brother, they're determined to be successful though, despite the weather. This children's book is for that budding entrepreneur, that young entrepreneur in your life. So the money lessons learned in this one, counting money, small business management, entrepreneurship, and making money. The recommended age range for this one is three to seven years old. It's around 40 pages, and it's also a newer book. It uh, came in around uh, 2012. Number six, one cent, two cents, old cent, new cent, all about money. This one is written by Bonnie Worth and illustrated by Aristides Ruiz. Similar to other Dr. Seuss books, this one includes creative rhymes and illustrations that keep kids engaged. They also walk through interesting facts about money, different denominations, and where the idea of money even came from. Kids can learn neat tidbits like why we use copper for pennies instead of bronze, and why paper money is actually made from cotton and linen. Pretty cool, I didn't know that, actually. <laughs> money lessons learned. Why we have money, how money is used, and the history of money. The recommended age range for this book is four to eight, and it's around 48 pages. Number seven, Trouble With Money, written by Stan Bernstein and illustrated by Jan Bernstein. From another well-known book series, The Bernstein Bears, the Bernstein Cubs learn about spending, saving, and making money in this awesome kid's book. After Papa Bear kind of loses, <laughs> loses his cool with, the, with their spendthrift ways, the Cubs decide to earn their keep. And uh, they learn that it's not only fun to spend money, but it's fun to make money too. This way you're getting the opportunity to help others as well. So some of the money lessons learned in this book are saving money, smart spending, allowance and chores, making money, and then contributing to your neighborhood. The recommended range for this one is three to seven years old, and it's around 32 pages. Number eight, Just Shopping with Mom. This one's written and illustrated by Mercer Mayer. Have you ever gone shopping with your kids and they have a terrible case of the wants? I want that, I want that, I want that. Well, that's what this story is all about. The mom takes her three kids, who all appear to be like under five, so God, God help her. <laughs> she takes them shopping, and the children make the trip a bit of a disaster. She miraculously keeps her cool and helps the kids learn about patience when it comes to shopping. Uh, fun side note on this one, tell your kids to keep their eye out for the little mouse on each page. It's a way to keep their attention and have a good giggle. <laughs> Some of the money lessons learned for this one are patience with shopping, shopping with a plan and a list, and then the important one, wants versus needs. This one's recommended for ages three to seven, and it's a shorter one, around 24 pages. Number nine, A Chair for My Mother, written and illustrated by Vera B. Williams. After a devastating fire at their home, a family loses a lot of their personal belongings. The neighborhood helps get this family back on their feet with some furniture, but one thing is still missing after the fire, a comfortable chair for the working mother to sit in at the end of her long work days. The story is told through the eyes of the daughter as her family saves their coins in a big jar so they can eventually get this comfortable chair. It's a feel-good story that would make an excellent read for Mother's Day or even Mama's birthday. Money lessons learned in this one, saving money, making money, savings goals, and giving back. This one's good for ages four to eight, and it's 32 pages long. All right, the last one, number 10 here, Curious George Saves His Pennies. This one is from Margaret Ray and H.A. Ray. After finding a toy he really loved, Curious George is encouraged by the man in the yellow hat to save up his money. George starts coming up with new and unique ideas to achieve his savings goal. If your kid is interested in getting that next new shiny toy, this book might set them on a path to earning their 
own money instead of bothering you for it. <laughs> they may just enjoy that toy even more if they saved up enough to buy it themselves. Some of the money lessons learned in this one, saving money, buying toys, making money, and keeping your money safe. This one is ideal for ages four to seven, and it's 32 pages long. So those are the top 10 books that I had to list out here. Let's list them out one more time, just in case you missed any of them and you wanna write it down. Number one, If You Made a Million. Number two, Money Monsters. Number three, Alexander, who used to be rich last Sunday. Number four, Bunny Money. Number five, Lemonade in Winter. Number six, One Cent, Two Cents, Old Cent, New Cent. All about money, that's the Dr. Seuss one. Number seven, Trouble with Money. Number eight, Just Shopping with Mom. Number nine, A Chair for My Mother. And then number 10, Curious George Saves His Pennies. These books are a great starting place to begin healthy discussions about money with your kids. We've used a lot of them, probably about half of them, and they help us to have some great conversations. And we're already seeing some positive benefits from our kids, like smart spending, saving for big goals, and charitable giving. After reading one of these books with your kids, take some time and ask them what they think about the story. Perhaps it reminds them of something in their everyday lives. The conversations you'll have with your children, they're going to be memorable, and they could have an impact on their financial well-being for decades to come. So what are your favorite kids' books about money? Did I miss any on this list? Would you add some? Please let us know in the comments below. This is Andy Hill from Marriage, Kids, and Money, signing off. Carpe diem.